Hello guys, Reza here. Welcome to another Marvelous Designer for Beginners video. In this one, we are going to focus on pleats in Marvelous Designer. I have packed a lot of goodies in this one. So let's get started with this marvelous application. Now let's talk about what a cloth pleat is. It's basically a double or multiple fold in a garment made out of cloth. So when you want to create folds uh, within the garment, you basically need to use a type of a pleat. Usually pleats are held by stitching on top or on the side and we have different usage for different types of garment using different methods of pleating. For example, this one is, um, you can see different types of pleats in the pants. We've got two pair of pants here, two different types. We have a curtain, we have skirt, which is a very common use for pleats, different variations, different looks for a pleat. We have something called box pleat, which is usually something that you see the back of um, of a off the rack dress shirt and of course i've got this little guide here and that shows how pleat works so basically we deal with overlay and a turn back and an underlay so every time you have a single pleat you deal with the three folds or three layers basically and again you either stitch it from the top or at the bottom and create your pleat. And we have good number of types of pleats. We have accordion, we have box, cartridge, fountain, honeycomb, kick, knife, organ, so on and so forth. Feel free to do a little bit of research on that, investigate. Obviously, we do not have time to cover all of the types. And in Marvelous Designer in particular, uh, we can do only three using the out of the shelf tools and if you wish to do any other fancy types you actually need to make that manually so let's just focus on uh, the the most common type which is this one right here called a knife pleat because that's the the simplest way of creating a pleat and it's one of the most common types and it's quite pleasing to the eye as well. We might actually have a look at a cardion as well, which is the, a variation of the a knife pleat and see how we can get that one done in Marvelous Designer. So without any further ado, let's dive right in and open Marvelous Designer and look at the tools and methods and see how we can accomplish that. Now here I am inside Marvelous. I have added an avatar, the custom avatar that we added arrangements points to it in the previous video. So uh, feel free to double check if you don't know what I'm talking about. You kind of need to have the arrangements points on your avatars from now on. We're probably not going to use it this time for the pleats, but in general, um, it, they are going to be quite helpful, those points. So um, the avatar is here. What I'm trying to achieve, uh, there are many ways of creating pleats. I'm just going to kind of target the most common one, the one that I know, to be honest with you, um, but I'm sure that there will be other ways of doing pleats. Uh, first thing I need to do is to measure around the waist. Now in the avatar, avatar editor what we talked about in the previous lesson seventh lesson was to how to add arrangement points but we did not talk about measurements now here's an opportunity again to talk about something new something other than creating pleats and that is how to create measurements now i need to know the measurements because i need to create the first part of my garment uh, using the measurements that i achieve here to do that, I go simply into avatar, measurements, and I will be talking about other types as well, but let's target the, the most 
common and the probably the simplest way of measuring and that is basic circumference measure. So if I click on that, I need to click three times around the area that I want, which at this, which for this particular example is going to be around the waist. I'm going to press two just to make sure that I'm in orthographic and I'm going to zoom in holding down shift and as soon as I hold down shift you can see those lines do come up which is going to be quite helpful I'm going to click first around the waist and then hold down shift click uh, on the other side the opposite side and the reason that I'm holding down shift because I want that line to be straight now the third click will determine how high and low this measurement is going to be I try to kind of keep it exactly on the same level again with the shift held down I can click and also try to memorize that value so 725 it's a round number so that's perfect now that's the measurement for around the waist of this character just so you know if I go in here and to avatar editor in measurements now we have this measurement recorded I can go in here and even name it. I'm gonna call it waistline, so it all makes sense. And if you don't want to see it because we really just need the length, I can easily go and turn it off. So 725 is what we're looking for. I'm going to close that. Now 725 is the measurement all around the waist. What we want is half of it for the front. So I'm just going to bring up the calculator, go 725 divided by 2, and this 362.5 is the number that I want for the first top part of the garment. So I know that whatever I create is going to be a perfect fit. It won't harm to be accurate. Again, you can be kind of less accurate with it, but... Um, this is pretty straightforward, so I don't see any problem with that. So I'm going to go to rectangle and instead of just dragging and drawing, I'm just going to click on an empty area and I'm going to paste uh, 362.5 for the height, maybe 70 or 80 probably. Actually 75, happy medium, 75 will get the job done. Amazing. So I'm just going to put that into the position. Again, this has no impact on anything whatsoever. It's just to be organized. For this one, I'm going to select the move tool and bring it to position a little bit. Then I can probably use the same pattern and create the second part of the fabric as well. So I'm just going to press Control C, Control V, move it the bottom i'm gonna hold down shift so there's not much problem with the alignment i'm gonna to go to edit pattern and start moving this as well so now if you're wondering what would be the length so this length to be three times bigger than this length so i'm going to bring the calculator 362 times three so what I want is around a thousand so you can be a little bit inaccurate it's not going to be a problem I'm just gonna move it ever so slightly into positive Z so the second part is just um, slightly in front of the first part now the first part will be wrapped around the waist and the second part is where we are going to put our internal lines and they will actually create the pleats on the garment. Now let's move on to the next chapter and see how we can create the internal lines. We are going to start with a knife pleat and again we had a look at what a knife pleat looked like. We also had a look at a guideline or a simple guide to tell us that for each pleat we need at least three lines now the more lines you insert more pleats you are going to get on the garment so there is no right or wrong here you just need to do the math correctly now um it's basically all it all happens in here and we need to just insert a few lines and create our 
internal lines. I'm just going to go and add point and split line. That's one way of doing it. You can actually select the line and this is a bit of a shortcut. Right click on it and go split and get to exact same window. Now we go all the way to uniform split and you can see now I'm splitting garment in half divided by two. Let's go with 18 because that gives me enough to have some nice pleats on the skirt. So 18 is good. Also, be mindful of the number that you have here. 55.9 is the distance between each segment. Now I'll tell you why that's important in a second. So 18 segments, 55.9 distance between each. Let's go insert. Now for the other side, you can exactly do the same thing. You can go in here and put in 18, right? And you can go in here into internal polygon, internal lines and just connect them one by one. That's one way of doing it. And that's totally fine. There is nothing wrong with that. The problem is sometimes you have too many of these lines and this method can be time consuming or cumbersome. So I will show you a simpler method. Once you insert the top lines, then go to edit pattern, select one of these segments, either side, right click and offset as internal line. You probably guessed where I'm going with this. We have distance. Do you remember 55.9? Well, let's put that in 55.9 and how many lines I need 17 because this one it was 18 and need 17 more and voila, I go OK and I have my internal lines. So these are some of the hacks that I've picked up over the years and um, you can use that instead and save time on your workflow. Now, this part is done. Let's go ahead and introduce the pleat tool inside Marvelous Designer. Before I apply pleats fold tool, I am going to actually give this garment a fabric. So I am going to add a fabric. I'm going to call this knife pleat so I know this belongs to a knife pleat. I'm going to give this a really nice red looking color something like that and I am going to go all the way into physical properties and preset all the way down and I'm going to increase density. Now density is going to make the fabric drop much nicer and I do that if I really would like to see some folds. As an analogy it's like adding a gravity just a touch. Too much. I'm gonna go with 60. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Uh, at the moment I have no idea. So drag and drop fabric to them. Um, with both of them selected, I'm going to go to particle distance and lower that to something like 10. So we get a much pleasant behavior. We'll see if I start with the simulation and see a bit of lagging happening, then I'm going to increase the particle distance just to see what I'm doing. Uh, usually anything below 10 will result in the scene slowing down dramatically, but I just want to get a good result right off the bat. So we'll see how we go. All right, uh, time to assign pleats fold tool. Now, where to find the tool? One way is to go to 2D pattern and pleats, and then we have pleats fold and pleats sewing. Another way to look for it is to go into 2D pattern window, and we have this icon here. I can tear off the menu so you guys get to see. We have pleats fold and pleats sewing. Now, they're extremely easy to work with and Marvelous has done a marvelous job. I know I'm repeating this joke. I'm being honest. It's <laughs> the application has done a marvelous job simplifying this for us. So we start with pleats fold. The way it works, we just need to know how this works. Uh, we have a start point and an end point. So you need to click twice 
and double click to end the tool. Now, both times you click needs to be inside the garment and you need to actually include all of your internal lines. As long as you have that in mind, it's very simple to use. I will show you how. So you click inside the garment before the first internal line, single click, and I'm gonna go all the way. You don't need to hold down shift or anything. So make sure to cross all of these internal lines, go all the way to the end, and double click and then you get the pleats fold window as promised we have three types that we can create out of the shelf inside marvelous designer we have knife we have box which is like two knife pleats looking at each other side by side and we have accordion which is again a variation of knife plate usually on a longer dress we get more pleats but again very very similar now, um, we have reverse direction, so let's talk about that. If you look closely, we have a red line and a blue line and a red line and a blue line. Every time you would like to create a pleat, you need three lines. Again, I'm gonna bring up this guide. We have overlay, we have turn back, and we have underlay. Now we have outside fold represented by the red and inside fold represented by blue color. If I go reverse, we start with outside fold. If I go reverse, all of a sudden we start with inside fold. There is really not much difference. It really comes down to what you would like to get. So there is no right or wrong way. For number of internal lines per pleat, we really want to stay with the three. We don't want to do two because if you do two, then potentially you're minimizing the effect of the turn back. We want to have a clear turn back overlay and underlay. That's why we need outside, inside, and the, the line in the middle. So three should give us a good result. And fold angle, we already talked about fold angle, zero to 360 degrees, meaning that it's going to completely inward and outward and gives us a very crisp result. If you change that and go with different variations, you're softening the result. This may or may not be what you want. For us, we want nicely defined pleats. So 360 to zero is what I want. Okay, with that in mind, I'm going to go okay. Nothing is going to happen because I haven't simulated anything. But now these lines are much sharper and thicker, meaning that the tool has been applied successfully and we are on a good path. Now, I really would like to sew all of this into this top garment and that's why we have pleats sewing. Yes, we can achieve that using MN free sewing or MN segment sewing because it's for sewing multiple garments into multiple garments, but this makes our job 100 times easier. So you basically save out of a lot of clicking because you just need to click two times. So I'm gonna go to pleat sewing, select the source, click, click, and then starting with the target, click, and look how beautifully Marvelous identifies every three segments and group them. You don't need to click multiple times. You just click one last time when you reach the end. And voila you have your sewing all done for you. How cool is that? Now, I don't want to simulate right now because both fabrics will drop. It just doesn't make any sense. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to freeze the top fabric so it kind of stays in place. And I simulate the bottom fabric. Best thing to do is just to save before you simulate um, so you don't lose content if that happens, but usually this should go fine. I'm just gonna go to file and save project and hit simulate. How cool is that? We can see nicely defined fleets. You can see they all look fantastic. So again, 
if you see any problem just push them in and you get the result the way that you want probably all i need to do at this stage is to copy and paste this flip it to the other side sew both patches together or both fabrics together and simulate one last time Again, it's been done successfully. Control S to save. And probably it would be a good time to basically unfreeze any other patch that you have. So I'm going to select these two. I'm going to right click and I am going to unfreeze. Remember, Control K is going to unfreeze the selected fabrics. We all good to go. So let's hit simulate beautiful just going to pause probably move these guys just a bit up and simulate again excellent probably select here and turn off show internal lines so i see the result better but you can see this works beautifully you can always play around and just push the fabric out in and out you can give this a different preset however you want to but um, i'm pretty happy with the result again it's up to you how you would like to style it how you would like to design it but um, that's basically the basics of how to create a simple knife pleat and create a stylish looking skirt. Now let's go to the next chapter and I will quickly show you how to create an accordion one. Uh, it may look a bit difficult at once, but believe me, once you see how am I doing this, it's not really that difficult. So let's go to the next chapter and quickly finish that as well. Now I'm going to clean up the scene Press delete and let's see how we can approach accordion um, pleats now accordion pleats are a form of a knife pleating um, which allows the garment to kind of expand its shape when the character is moving they tend to be a lot longer and we usually have more pleats um, into accordion pleats so the look of it is slightly um, more sophisticated but it's not really that bad i'm going to actually explore it slightly differently so you guys get to see two separate two different methods of doing almost the same thing uh, so this time i'm going to use eclipse and i am going to make this quite large actually move this up ever so slightly Yep, that's definitely long enough. <laughs> um, now I need to kind of find the center of this. So I am going to very quickly create two internal lines. That's two. And I'm going to go to internal eclipse and try to actually snap to the center, holding down control shift and create two circles. This is one and I'm going to zoom in and this is going to be the second one now i'm going to create a hole inside the second one so i'm going to go in here right click and say convert to hole so the second one is hollow or the inner circle is hollow and the outer circle i am going to actually cut and sew just to give this a little bit of design I'm going to do the same thing for these two guys. I'm going to right click, cut and sew. 
and these are the ones that go on the side. I'm not going to do this for the front and back. I don't want to have any seams at front and back, but again, totally, totally up to you and your design. These are just design decisions. Um, I'm going to select all of it in the 3D and bring it to the position. So I'm going to select this guy, this guy, and this guy, move it up, pressing E to rotate, and that should do the trick. Again, at any point of time, if you feel like this is way too big, you can always go in here into edit pattern and just nudge these points in. So you can select these guys and nudge them in. By the way, there's a line in there. I don't need it, so I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to nudge that in. And again, these are, this is your choice, how you want to do it. And I'm not really too worried about this bit because I've already taken care of that. So it looks like the diameter is actually a little bit smaller that I want, but again, that's fine. A little bit of inner penetration. I can actually um, pull the garment out when I simulate it. All right, fantastic. Now, uh, this bit was easy, right? There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I just created almost the same thing with a slightly different method. Now, the question is how on earth am I going to create those internal lines while I have a circular shape instead of a straightforward rectangular shape? Well, you'd be pleased to know it's actually fairly simple. I'm going to select these two lines, these two segments, right click on them, and I'm going to go offset as internal line along curved. Now it says, all right, you got these two segments selected. How many offsets do you want? Well, it's totally up to you. You can go, I don't know, maybe 50. And again, instantly it creates that for us. I'm going to go and select the bottom two, like so. Right click, offset as internal lines. And again, put the same amount, 50. Fantastic. So we have the internal lines all done. Let's get to the pleats fold. Before I do that, as usual, I am going to save the project. Just be mindful of that. And I'm doing it intentionally during the recording because I want you guys to get to the habit of that as well. Now, with pleat fold, you may say, Reza, but you said click once and go to the end of it and click twice, uh, basically double click. How on earth are we going to create that curve? Well, not to worry. It's actually quite easy. As I said, put your mouse inside the garment before the internal lines, click. And now you don't need to go all the way to the end because obviously we're going to miss out of all of these lines. You can actually single click to break the line click and go all the way to the end when you cross all of these internal lines and just double click. Now we see according pleats, we are going to select that and Marvelous Designer successfully creates the fold strength for us. Feel free to reverse the direction if you want. I honestly don't care. And number of internal lines per pleats, we are going to still use three fold angle. I definitely would like to have 360 to zero. It is actually more common to have a super sharp lines and accordion. So I'll definitely would like to have that. And I'm going to go, okay. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. Zoom back a little bit. Now, here's the thing. We did cut and sew these areas. You can actually use pleat sewing to uh, get the same effect, but I'm just going to show you guys with a with the simple cut and sew that we did between these two fabrics just to for you guys to see the difference. Okay, I made this hole just a tad smaller. Um, it doesn't matter if it stuck. Um, you can always pull that out. Also for the hands, 
the fabric will kind of stuck with inside the fingers, but you can always untangle it during simulation. Um, I'm going to actually go to fabric and add a little bit of friction ever so slightly, something like five. Actually, I'm gonna go 10 uh, just for the waist to stay. You can always pin that as well, of course. Um, all right, with that, I'm going to save before I hit simulate and I am going to simulate. Now I'm going to untangle the cloth um, from here and from here. And you can see the garment, it looks beautiful. Um, I can actually move this up. So um, I can just stop the simulation and select both sides, press W, move this up just a tad and go in there and again make this waistline just a tad smaller and simulate. And you can see now it's kind of staying put beautifully. I can pull this garment out. So there is absolutely no intersection whatsoever. But uh, look at the amount of detail that we are getting, uh, which works beautifully. All right, uh, that's pretty much it. That's a, a very simple way of creating uh, an accordion pleat on a character. You can just imagine the way uh, the character moves and this kind of moves with it. The, all the interaction that this creates is just absolutely amazing. And in no time at all, we use a slightly different method to create a different type of uh, pleat. I will cover the third method, box pleating, but in a in a future lessons when I talk about shirts, so on and so forth. So we'll leave that for later. But for now, let's just practice these. Have a look online and kind of explore different types of pleats and see if you can somehow create those manually, almost using the same tricks. But that should do for this tutorial. Thank you very much guys again for watching, for supporting this channel. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as well to know more about upcoming projects and tutorials. Uh, the avatar is also available on my Patreon page, another way to support the channel. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Have a great rest of your day and see you guys in the next Marvelous Designer lesson.